Hello and welcome to the Care It Out Sleep Show, a podcast for tired parents who are searching for a bit more sleep in the caring way. I'm your host, Kerry Secker, infant sleep consultant, founder of my unique sleep approach, Care It Out, and your caring sleep supporter. I really hope you'll join me on my mission to get small to settle night's sleep without the tears, training, or techniques. I love talking about sleep and I can't wait to share my sleep subjects with you. My approach to getting you more sleep is simple, straightforward, but above all, it's got to make sense and feel best for you. Ready to get more sleep? Then let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Carry Out Sleep Show. You are listening to your host, Kerry Secker, and Happy New Year! I don't know when it's out, when we can stop saying that. It feels really weird. It seems like a really, really long time ago now. I've only been back to work just over a week, but I really, really hope you had a lovely Christmas with your families, and I am wishing you all the best for 2020. I'm really hoping it is sleep fueled for you. Fueled or filled for you? Um, but yeah, I am really glad to be back. This is the the podcast stopped for a bit over Christmas. Um, I had a break with my friends and family. It was really, really lovely. Um, even though it feels like a long time ago but I am raring to go for 2020 and I can't wait to get stuck into the podcast series for you Um, this year this is the first one of 2020 and it's also the first one that I am recording in the new office which seems very very exciting for those of you that don't know we moved offices I think it was just the beginning of December again it feels like such a long time ago and it's just really nice to be in our own space and yeah it's absolutely lovely but because it was so busy with the run up to Christmas and everything else was going on I didn't record anything here so it feels doubly exciting first one of 2020 and the first one in the new office I am going to get straight stuck in. I've really missed talking about my favourite sleep um, subject, sleep. Um, so I'm going to get straight back into the next sleep series. And today's podcast is all about bedtime routine. And I thought it would be really useful to do a um, a podcast on the bedtime routine, that a Q&A set. Uh, let's start again. I thought it would be really useful to do a bedtime routine Q&A session because, as you can imagine, I get asked loads of questions and I don't mind because I'm passionate about talking about sleep and answering as many as I possibly can and this year on um on Instagram on the sleep socials as I like to call them on Instagram and Facebook blogs and things I'm taking it right back to bedtime basics and kind of doing a refresher um in my sleep steps so my bedtime basics are naps and bedtime bedtime routine bedtime boundaries or how they're settling to sleep and then what we're actually doing at the wake-ups and like most things on my approach I like to keep things really super simple and straightforward and your bedtime basics it says it does what it says on the tin really basic advice that I feel that needs to be accessible and affordable to everybody I put it out there all the time Um, and it really is it's your basics but it's also your basis of getting to settled night's sleep Um, so today's sleep subject is bedtime routine and I'm going to go through and answer eight of my most frequently asked questions um, on this subject for you. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to dive straight in with the questions um, and then go from there. So question number one, when can you start off a bedtime routine? Again, get asked this all the time. And like most things on my approach, which is probably annoying to hear all the time when I talk about this, but there is no right or wrong. Um, it's more about, there's no right or wrong, it's when you feel you and your baby are ready, really, for a bedtime routine. I think the important thing to remember is what a bedtime routine is. So I separate out bedtime routine from how your little one goes to sleep. They are linked, and sometimes how your little one goes to sleep is in the bedtime routine. But for the purpose of this podcast, I'm going to separate it out. And all a bedtime routine really is, is it's, I like to call bedtime routine preparation for sleep separation. Because going down to sleep is a period of separation from you for your little one, even if it's for a really short amount of time. And what the bedtime routine does is it's preparing your little one for this separation and it's calming and cueing them down and then letting them know that sleep is coming. So that's all your bedtime routine is. It doesn't need to be rigid. Com- convoluted or complicated um, I definitely overcomplicated that sentence there um, 
it could be like most things on my approach again i like to keep things as simple and straightforward as possible path of least resistance so it could even be as simple as doing two or three things in the same order before bed every night now this can be really really boring for you and sometimes for your little one too but what it's doing if you're doing the same thing in the same order every single night it starts to feel familiar it can let your little one know what's coming next they can anticipate it and it makes them feel safe and settled and babies love that especially newborn babies or um babies in the fourth trimester but you could equally apply that to babies of any age to be honest so going back to that that you don't have to overcomplicate it and do lots of diff- difficult things before bed it could be something as simple as doing the two or three things um before in the same order everything like before your little one goes down to bed and these could be things so simple like changing the nappy in the same order every time getting them dressed in their pajamas um singing a song going into their sleep space bedtime routine looks different to every family there's no right or wrong your way is okay but that's what a bedtime routine is two or three things in the same order every single night before bed and because it's so simple you can choose to start a bedtime routine off from newborn um and again it might not hurt it's natural you might not want to hear this but it's natural that at that newborn stage that sleep can take a while to settle and um, it's it's not going to have a huge impact on the night, but it can be useful for both you. To it, it's a uh, marks the end of the day. It's something to do at that witching hour when everyone's getting a bit tired and we don't know what to do. Um, but it also can help establish that that bedtime routine from the get go. So to answer that question, when can you start a bedtime routine? My approach is that there's no right or wrong. It's when you feel you and your baby are ready, and that could be from newborn from day dot. You could just start off those simple two or three things. Um, it's important to a reminder that some families do not have a bedtime routine and that works for them. My bed benchmark is always, is it working for you? And if it's working, all is well. And if it's not, then we can tweak it. But some parents d- don't have a bedtime routine. I um, professionally and personally love having a bedtime routine, but what works for one might not work for another. Or you might decide to wait until bedtime is a little bit more established. When you're little, in those very early days, it's very likely, though not always a given, that your baby is going to be downstairs with you um, as you're having dinner, watching a bit of TV, just having an evening. And then as they get older, that, that bedtime then starts to get established and they have a bedtime in a separate space from you. So if you are starting the bedtime routine off from newborn, which if that works for you and you feel ready give it a go and if it doesn't work we can you can always go back a little bit um but if you're doing it from a newborn what you would do is you would when you're getting them ready for bed that's when i would do the two or three things in the same order every single night and if you are waiting um until that um their bedtime is established then you just do the bedtime routine when you go upstairs for bed um and actually a good point is when if you do start off from newborn what tends to happen what's very likely to happen is you will do your bedtime routine and then go downstairs but then when bedtime starts to um naturally get established then you can do your bedtime routine up there and then do that bedtime i hope that makes sense i said bedtime a lot there but i hope that really makes sense to you question number two is do you have to have a bath every day this is a great question. I probably get asked this every day, to be honest. And my question, like most things on my approach, I'm, if I'm anything, um, if predictable, is absolutely not. You don't have to bath them every day. Then babies aren't getting dirty. Um, well, unless they're older. Weaning definitely means cleaning. But yeah, you don't. You absolutely do not have to bath them every day. For some little ones, bathing them um, can really help calm and cue them down for sleep we do know that um warmth and calming down can be um it can really help get the sleepy hormones going the the sleepy hormone melatonin get those juices flowing and for some it does help calm and cue them down where for others it just riles them up and excites them and then it takes an age to then calm them down on the other side of tubby time so Again, I'm for whatever works for you and your small. Um, They don't need a bath every day unless they are getting absolutely filthy, they're at nursery, 
sticking in puddles or weaning him into cleaning but even then it doesn't necessarily have to be a bath you could have a wet white wash a flannel wash a bit of a shower one day and then a bath the next you don't have to bath them every day and if you find that it calms um and cues them down for sleep and they're enjoying their bath and they're not having a problem settling down to sleep after tubby time then crack on with bath time I think it's a lovely way to boost your bond end the day and I think there's something so lovely about having your baby in their pajamas and all clean I think it's lovely where for others if you if your small is one of these little ones where they just get more and more excited or they're just too tired to enjoy it there's no point having a, a soak if they're <laughs> sobbing through their soak um um, they're not enjoying it, they're too excited, their highs are kite afterwards, they're taking forever to go to sleep, then it's okay to skip it um, and leave out the bath out of the bedtime routine. If you do decide um, to do whatever works for you and you think they do need a wash, it is okay to a wet wash, uh, a wet wipe wash definitely counts. Pits and bits definitely count, just get them clean, like hands and face, um, that, that definitely all counts. And whilst it's not absolutely impossible, because nothing is impossible, I've learned that nothing is impossible when it comes to babies and sleep, it is very, very unlikely that your little one is waking up in the morning or at night time, whatever time they're waking up, and going, oh goodness, I'm awake because I didn't have that bath, or they're thinking, hang on, where is my bath? I think it's highly, highly unlikely, if not impossible, that that is going to, um, that's going to happen. Question number three, how long should it be? That, <laughs> that rhymed, I didn't know it. So as I mentioned before, your small bedtime routine is preparation for sleep separation. And the role of their bedtime routine, it, it is an important sleep step bedtime routine, but I'm going to be honest, just doing the same things in the same order every single night isn't necessarily going to help them stitching their sleep cycles at night time. However, the role of the, their bedtime routine is to calm and cue them um, for sleep and have time together, aka boosting your bond. And doing these things um, helps that um, that separate that sleep separation from you go a little bit more smoothly. Or well, that's the aim of the game. Any the, anyway. Um, so my suggestion for how long is it should it be again you're going to get sick of me saying this what works for one might not be um, might not work for the other but generally speaking we want it ideally between 30 to 40 minutes ish i do like that word ish we want to try not to have it that it's so short that your little one doesn't have enough time with you to boost their bond we want them to have enough time that they feel i call it anchored um but connected to you that they are happy to separate from you that's especially important for really tiny little babies but again very applicable for age uh, applicable and age appropriate to all ages um and we also don't want it too short that they've just gone from like playing downstairs downstairs playtime to going into bed transitions take time um it's like us if i just left my office and went home it's very difficult to calm down you need th just that transition time of i'll pack away my i'll put my phone away then i'll pack away my laptop and then i'll tidy my desk a little bit pack my bag and go it's the same for your little one with bedtime routine so ideally it's not too short so ideally it's 25 30 to minutes ideally however they're all really different if you find that your little one is getting too riled up it's too long sometimes getting finding out what works for you it can be a bit of trial and error and on the other hand also we don't want it too long because if bedtime if the run up to their bedtime routine to, if their run up um and their bedtime routine is too long routine run up what can happen is they just get more and more overtired more and more overwired over and overstimulated and they can miss that window for sleep so how long ideally should it be ideally it's not too short it's not too long and it's roughly between 30 to 40 minutes however it can take a little bit of trial and error to find out what works for you question number four this is a good one this is a really good one this somebody sent this in from instagram and i was like yep i'm definitely going to include this so does tv and screen time impact sleep now in short we know that screens and tv emit a blue light which is known to have an impact on the production of sleep hormone their sleep hormone melatonin um it can overexcite them it can it can also overexcite them and overstimulate them as well 
Um, especially if it's like an action show or it's a particularly um, energizing TV program. So those are two things to remember is one that the screens and TVs, we know this from research that it can emit a blue light which um, can have an impact on their sleep hormone. It just stops the production of it and then that they can have trouble settling to sleep. And also screen and TV time, it depends on what they're watching. Um, it can also excite and overstimulate them, especially if they're older ones, if it's a really active, engaging, kind of really um, imaginative TV show, they can get really drawn into it and that can have an impact on it as well. However, like most things on my approach again, for me, it's all about balance and what's working for you. And again, I'm not saying it's completely impossible because nothing is impossible, but I have worked with, well, I worked as a nanny for 18 years um, and many of them would have a little bit of TV time before bed and going out to bed and it didn't impact them. Um, and they went to bed nicely and they settled to sleep nicely. They did their, they enjoyed their bedtime routine. They settled to sleep nicely and they had a decent night's sleep, like they had a settled night's sleep. Um, and it's the same with families on my practice. Um, some families, some families, again, it's what works for you. Some families are completely uh, not against it, but they're, they're just not interested in TV time. Um, some maybe are, maybe they are against it. It's just not for them. And that's absolutely fine. Um, and again, all the fam, all from, I can only talk from my experience on my practice, lots of families, they watch the TV and again, not having an impact. And Again, just to this is just my experience as I've never ever stopped them watching TV. I wouldn't introduce it. So if I was working with a family, I wouldn't introduce TV time at, as part of their bedtime routine or suggest we start doing it. But at the same time, I've never suggested to a family we need to stop. I've never, from my experience, I've never found that it's impacted um, settling to sleep, bedtime routine, settle night sleep either that's not to say it's not going to for yours so I think it's about finding that balance so in short screens do emit a blue light we definitely know that which can have an impact on the production of sleep hormone it just stops them from the blue light stops them from producing the the sleepy hormone melatonin and that can have an impact on them calming down for sleep settling to sleep and having a settled night's sleep and also it depends on their age um what they are watching but game, uh, TV t games, TV and screen time and games actually, because screens and games, I think that's where I was going with that, can actually excite, overstimulate them and rile them up, especially action shows or um, like imagination things. I mentioned that before. So I really think, again, it comes back to that balance, finding out what works for you and your little one. I think if, if you're having a little bit of TV time in your bedtime routine and it's all working, then I think that's absolutely fine. Um, but if it isn't, then you might want to think about um, reducing the TV time or stopping it altogether. If you're having TV time and screen time in your bedtime routine, there are a few guidelines. Um, the top three are that I wouldn't have, if we can, I wouldn't have TVs and screen times phones actually in the bedroom. I would have it outside of the bedroom and ideally before they go to their, their bath time or they're starting the bedtime routine prep. The other one is that, um, and I go, it sounds so obvious, but I think it's definitely worth saying that they are watching age appropriate um, material on the screens and TV, that they're watching something suitable for their age and they're not getting over excited on it. And the other thing is, it's like anything in life, I just, it's not about overindulging in it. A five or 10 minutes as part of their bedtime routine is absolutely fine. Um, but like if they're sitting there glued to the TV or screen, I'm sure none of you are doing this before bed, then that can have an impact. And sometimes it's not even to do with the, the, the blue light. It's just that they've sat down for such a long period of time that they then need to get rid of that excess, en excess energy that they've built up. I think that's really important. I've also done a, a blog on this, or I'm fairly sure I've done a blog on this. There's a blog on this somewhere. And what I will do is I will dig it out um, and I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it will summarise what I've gone through. But I think this is a really important point. So I'll put it in the show notes for you. Question number five. I think we're at question number five. Um, is should it be at the same time every night? Again, really frequently asked question. And within reason, 
Yes, ideally it's roughly at the same time every night time. And this is because circadian rhythm, their sleep system, thrives on anchors and knowing what to expect. Um, so doing the same things at roughly the same time each day um, can really help cement in that this is, this is the body just knows what to expect. This is sleep time, this is bedtime routine. I know now this is my cue to calm down and start settling off to sleep. Um, but again, it is balance because we don't all do the same things to the dot each day and that's okay quite often there's lots of expectations on babies that smalls all of us actually that we're going to wake up at the same time every day do the same thing at the same time every single day nap the same length etc 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 um it's natural for it to to sleep shift a little bit around we can't always follow the clock and actually following the clock can be incredibly stressful one of my best tips is to block the clock um, I have to be really careful how I say that block the clock because watching it sometimes it can be useful but constantly watching it and going to it by the dot can be really really super stressful so should it be at the same time every night ideally within reason it is it's not swinging wildly it's okay for it to move around a little bit say 10 20 minutes but we don't want it be swinging wildly by 50 minutes 60 minutes I think an hour is far too much um but yeah it is okay not to do things to the dot and follow the clock every day life isn't like that things happen things come up um we can't always follow the clock to the letter to the dot so number six is is it okay to splash in the bath another great question that was sent in um via instagram um i say yes to this which is often quite surprising because lots i know many people are just are like there's this thought that you've got to be really super quiet in the run up to bedtime and again i just think it's wildly unrealistic especially if you've got more than one child for everybody to be completely quiet after dinner not making eye contact really quiet nobody doing anything it's just not going to happen in many many houses and I actually think it's okay to splash and play in the bath for two reasons. One, it's going to boost your bond and anchor your little one to you, which again, we know is great to help that separation go a little bit more smoothly come sleep time. And also what it does is it lets, it's it's helping um, your little one get rid of that last bit of pent up energy, um, especially if they've sat still or they've had some quiet time. I think it's a great way to just kind of, it's like wiggling it all out, shaking it all out and, and that shaking then, I'm not suggesting you shake them for one minute, but it's that kind of, you know, when you shake something all out, it just feels instantly better. I hope that come across okay then. Um, so yeah, it's okay to splash and play in the bath. You don't have to keep it quiet. Let them have that, live their best life in there. Have a really loud tubby time. Um, the reasons for this is one, it can boost your bond, which can help that separation go smoothly. Secondly, it you're not to shake your babies. Um, I don't think I need to stress that, but it's more about just getting rid, like getting that that energy out, and it's having a bit of a shake up. It can really help um, with setting them to sleep afterwards. But also, it's really good fun bath time. If you're having a bath, chances are it's because your little one enjoys it. And if they're enjoying it, I think it's just a really nice, fun thing to do. It's a really lovely way to end the day. Um, my only advice around that is if you are having, um, like you're, they're splashing, playing, having a really shouty soak in the tub, my suggestion would be to cap it at five to 10 minutes, depending on the little one's age. If your little one is under six months, I think five minutes of splashing and kicking in there, it can be very tiring having a bath. Um, I'd cap it at 10 minutes. For older ones, six months to, to 18 months, they can go up for 10 minutes. Um, a little bit older than that could probably go up to 15 minutes, but no more than that. So yeah, is it okay to splash and play in the bath? absolutely yes um as long as it's not having an impact on them settling sleep afterwards for all the reasons i've just gone through um but the key is if they're having a splash and a play in there that we put a time limit on it to prevent them from getting overtired number seven is do you have to have bedtime books i guess i could have lumped this in um with should they have a bath every single night but I actually thought it would be quite useful to separate them out and again just like most things on my approach you don't have to have bedtime books at all some little ones even from a really really young age 
love the bedtime books. They'll sit down, they're engaged, they're looking at them, they're listening, they really, really enjoy it. And having a bedtime a bedtime book or two really helps to calm and cue your little one down for sleep. It's just part of their bedtime routine. They love it. Where for other ones, <laughs> reading the bedtime um, books, it's like anything else pre-bed. It can excite them, g them up. And some little ones, by the end of the day, they're, they're tired. We want them tired at bedtime to, to have enough peak pressure to get down. They're not interested in having a book or sitting through stories. So again, it's very much um, guided by what works for you and your little one. If you, if your little one enjoys the books, it's absolutely okay to have one or two books in there. Um, one or two books for probably six months to a year. Um, as they get a little bit older, you can extend the number of books and extend the time. Um, uh, but if it if they throw them around, they're cry- again if they're crying through their books, um, then I would just wrap it up. There's no point trying to um, read a book if they're not enjoying it and the same goes if they're bed begging where they're just clearly communicating to you that they're shattered and want to go to bed I wouldn't read a book however quickly um, you're going through it if they were overtired so do you have to have a book at bedtime absolutely not it's all about what works for you if your little one is enjoying the books and they settle down to sleep afterwards it's absolutely fine if it g's them up they're crying through them they're not enjoying them or they're overtired absolutely okay to ditch the books and some really lovely suggestions around books is if they're too tired for a book or they don't enjoy it you could always swap the bedtime book for a bit of a sleepy song um, it's often much shorter and much nicer for them Again, I would put a time limit on the books if you're doing it. Um, it's so difficult to say because it's it, what works for one might not work for another. Um, but you're probably looking at if under six months, like one book, like it's just very, very quick to do a book as they get past six months, one or two books to around a year, 18 months. And then after that, you could go to two or four books. It depends on how long your your little one's attention span depends on how long the books are and it depends on whether they are enjoying them and again just like the bath I promise you that if you don't have a bedtime book um like if you do books one night but not another night I think again it's not impossible because nothing is impossible um but I think it is very very unlikely that your little one is waking up and going hang on I didn't have my bedtime book I demand it now I need it now to get back to sleep And then the last question, question number eight, is how can you manage bedtime with two? Um, This is a really, really, well, all the questions are good, but this is particularly a really good question. Two can be really, really tricky. Um, It can be really hard to juggle. Gosh, who am I going to get down first? What if one needs me and the other one doesn't? How how are you going to do it? My practical suggestions, I've got loads of experience. My nanny days of bathing two, two or more children at the same time, including a baby. My suggestions with this, it's about the prep step, just getting yourself as organised as possible, uh, as possible as it can be with two of them uh, or more. My suggestion would be to get everything ready before you start. So run the bath first, get everybody's pyjamas out, everybody's nappies, everybody's cream, everything you need, toothbrushes, everything you need for the bedtime routine. I would get that ready before you start. And a little uh, tip that I've found invaluable, which... Again, it seems really common sense, but sometimes it's when you're in it, you can't really, you don't think of it sometimes. But I would always keep a stock of nappies and pajamas in the bathroom, so I didn't have to keep going upstairs, downstairs, trying to find nappy and pajamas for everybody. Just stick them in a drawer, and then they're there for you. I bathing them together. That's a personal. It really is a personal thing. And again, I would always come back to if everyone's too tired, you don't feel um, that you want to bath them together. That's absolutely fine. Um, But I would always bath them together. I'd put them all in together. Um, I would then bring the baby out, get the baby ready, nappy, pyjamas, get the baby ready for bed, then get the other one out, the older one out, get them dressed for bed. And I'm making it sound very easy clopping along like this, but it doesn't always, if if, if you're doing bedtime in multiples, it doesn't always work like that. Um, It can take a bit of time. Um, And then my... my suggestion would be to settle the youngest one to sleep first like get them down first um but again that's not always a definite it might you might have to 
some little bit of trial and error like try putting the little one down first i personally found that always worked for me getting the baby down first and then with the older one um as long as they're safe while you are setting the little one they would either come with me or they would um sit in their bed or just outside the bedroom and they would either have a little bit of screen time or i really love a like a, to- a toddler bed box like or a bed bag where you put little toys in there little things in there and they know it, again it depends on their age but they know that when you're settling the little one to bed um that they play with this um, and it is just for bedtime we don't have it during the day so it keeps a little bit of its novelty that can help massively it can give you that little bit of time to get baby settled and then you can go back to your older one who's very likely to be a toddler unless um you've got multiples then i would do the bed if it's multiples i would do the like twins triplets i would do them all together the other thing that i all used to find helpful as well is with old if you're putting the baby down first the older one you're more likely to be able to reason with the older one and communicate to you. even if they're really young and they're not talking yet you can communicate to them and say to them you know if you it's not a bribe because i'm not about bribing um, and i think sometimes that can be there's a very subtle difference between saying right if you do this then i'm going to come back um, that to me is a bribe and I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that but if I said to them right I'm gonna go and settle your baby brother or sister um, you go and have a look at your bed box or your bed bag and have a play in there or draw me a picture or do whatever you're doing in there and then I'm gonna come back and I'm all yours you're still saying the same thing that I'm gonna come back and spend time with you so that's the the bonus of them getting their sibling down to bed before them is they get to feel a little bit more grown up because they're um, going to bed a little bit later and they get your you to themselves for a little bit you can use that to your advantage without kind of dangling that over their head in a bribe if you do this and do that then I'm going to do this so it is the same thing it's just pedantics really and semantics but that can help massively as well um most I found most little ones would be quite cooperative with that um if you explained it to them that you would get them down get your baby brother and sister down and then i'm all yours and we can do something you know whatever they want to do for five minutes choose a book play with cars quiet play i found that quite helpful that brings us to the end of our i think it was six questions was it six or eight no, it was eight questions I've answered. I can't even remember. It's the end of my double day. But I really, really hope, like everything I put out there, my intention behind it is always, is it reassuring? Is it helpful? And is it useful? So I really, really hope you found me going through those most frequently asked questions, helpful and useful. And I really hope that those of you that needed to hear that heard it and that those of you that perhaps didn't still found it a little bit useful um i will be back in two weeks and in the meantime sending you big love and sleep solidarity bye thank you so much for listening to me your host kerry secker on the carrot out sleep show i really hope you found the podcast reassuring informative and a little bit fun if you did please don't forget to subscribe to the show below and i'd be so grateful if you could leave me some fabulous feedback I always love hearing from you and one lucky listener will win lifetime access to my Bedtime Basics e-course every single month. My next podcast episode will be out in two weeks time but if you can't wait for more of my sleep shizzle you can find me over on Instagram at Carrot Out Sleep Consultant. I update my sleep squares and speak sleep there on the daily. Big love and sleep solidarity to you all.